My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Hearthstone Arena. Oh boy. We are starting to run out of gold. We've got two more runs in us, provided that we get zero gold on each of them. Let's try not to do that. I'm going to be going with the Druid. Uh, most solid of these options is the Imp Master. Ooh, especially if we can keep it healthy, but unfortunately Druid of the Claw is just such an incredibly powerful pick. Hmm. Uh, it's got to be Boulder Fist. That's not even close. I don't know why I needed to do the hmm, yes, yes, which it could it be? No, because it's Boulder Fist. That's obvious. Mark of the Wild, Acolyte of Pain. I'm going to go Mark of the Wild, actually. Fuck it. Let's get some Mark of the Wild up in this bitch. I'd love to go Raging Worgen and then Mark of the Wild it and get some crazy shit going on, but um, Dark Iron Dwarf is just too good. Both of these are trash scum, so I'm going to be going with this one. Bloodhound Raptor, just for a solid two. Another Druid of the Claw, come on down. Bloodhound Raptor, just for a solid two. Another Druid of the... What? No Druid of the Claw? Um, so Nourish is really good card draw, but the thing is, if you don't already have a board advantage... That's why Nourish is really good in very situational decks. You'll find Nourish in all of the Ramp Druid decks, because... You know, you ramp up with all your wild grows and your innovates and all your stuff like that. But then you have no cards. So you use Nourish and Ancient of Lore to draw all the cards back and then you start playing cards again. Um, but I don't think I can take a turn off to draw three cards. So I'm going to be using the Keeper of the Grove. Just because the Keeper of the Grove is also an amazing card. I have no spell damage in this deck, and the only spell damage I'm likely to get is Starfire, Starfall, or Swipe. Maybe Wrath if it's offered in a good pick. Um, so I can't take the Cobalt Geomancer. Soul of the Forest is a little too expensive for what it does. I'm going to be going with the Stormpike Commando because it makes an immediate effect on the board. I already have two Blood from Raptors, so I'm actually going to go with the Wrath here. Ooh, Haunted Creeper. Oh, I love me a Haunted Creeper. I really do. Haunted Creeper versus Stormwind Champion, though. I'm going to take the Creeper. And I'm going to regret it at some point. But for the moment... Whee! Creeper! Uh, Death Lord is trash. So is the Ancient Mage. So, therefore, our decision has been made for us. Uh, I'd love to take another Starfire. But... Uh, what? I've got... Yeah, I've only got one Death Rattle so far, so there's no way I'm taking the Undertaker. Um, but there are so few solid three drops that the Harvest Golem is like an instant pick. Because it's just a solid three drop. Uh, Crazed Alchemist is really good late game tech. I always like to have one Naturalize just for that one card you can't remove and you need to deal lethal behind it. So it's always good to have at least one of them. Oh, all of this is really unfortunate. I hate both of these so much. <coughs> <coughs> wow. Oh, I thought I was healthy now. I hate both of these so much that I'm actually going to pick a Mana Wraith. That is how much I hate them. Uh, Spellbreaker is just, I guess, more solid than the rest of them. Youthful Brewmaster. I already have way too many two drops. And I'm only being offered low drops. This happens to me so often. Like... I'll pick all of my early game, and then I just only get off at late game from then on. Sorry, early game from then on. Uh, Ancient of War, Strong Card. All of these are trash, so I'm going to take the Iron Tusk, because it's actually the least trashy. Scarlet Crusader is an amazing 3-drop. Poison Steeds is actually not good at all. Um, so I'm going to be taking another Claw. I have way too much early game. I'm going to have to mulligan out of my early game into late game. That's how fucking bad this is. Um, and that's an abusive sergeant. Wow. Oh, we have trouble, guys. We are a druid without late game. I just want to point that out at this point. We're a druid with no late... Like, the whole point! There is a ramp druid archetype for a very important reason, and that's because druids have late game. They have it on lock. They've got an 8-8 with taunt. They've got a 5-10 with taunt. They've got a 10-5 that no one ever plays because you 
only ever play it as the 510 with taunt. They've got fucking 5-5 five five that draws you two cards. This is just sh crazy shit is going on in their late game, and we have, um, like, one of it. <coughs> I would feel much better if I picked up the Stormpike Commando. Uh, sorry, Storm Wind Champion. But I didn't, and that was wrong. So... All in all, it's actually not that bad. Like, I don't know why I'm complaining as much as I am. Uh, excuse me for one second. All the way through that draft, I needed to blow my nose and it was pissing me off. Like, I was... Like, there was- there was a level of commentary, and then right below that was a level of seething rage. Like, I was 1% at the brim commentary, and then 99% anger and anguish. Yep, that's good enough. Shit, that's good enough! That- that is a good enough curve. I mean, removal on turn 3 if I need it, otherwise... Uh, just play a decent card into a decent card into a decent card, especially because the Keeper of the Grove comes onto the field and can remove something. It's crazy. Also, let's just talk for a second about this Ice Crown card back. It just got released with the new rank season ending. Shit's insane. That is such- like, hang on. It's hella dope, guys. And I am saying that ironically. I don't use hella dope in everyday life. Look at that shit! It's so fucking- oh, it's bomb. Alright. I'm not gonna claw his face for two. Oh, but then I get two armor. That could be strats, guys. That could be strats. Huh? Okay, so he's playing that because if he didn't play it there, he would be playing it off curve. But at the same time, you dick! How dare you even consider doing that? Boo. Uh... Okay, so the reason I'm playing the Blood from Raptor straight into the axe is, first off, it does three damage to his face. So I just basically use two mana to do three damage to his face. Uh, but at the same time, every fucking card he could have played except for the Frothing Berserker, I would have been able to kill instantly. But I can't kill the fucking... How do I- how am I even gonna kill that? Fuck it, man! Taz Dingo! Shit! At least Taz Dingo takes a hit from each of them, and also sets this one up to die to fucking Keeper. This guy is gonna win so- I need to focus. I must safeguard the land. This guy is going to win so many matches off the strength of this bullshit. One frothing berserker in a warrior deck in arena is amazing. Two, because... Hang on, let me explain why. Because removal is usually pretty scarce in arena decks, and on top of that, you're usually just constantly trading for advantage on the board, so that's why it's always really good. Um... Having two is fucking bananas. The frost wolves stand ready. Interesting. So, my worst nightmare is that he actually uses the Frostwolf Warlord to hit my Dark Iron Dwarf. Because if he does that, I have to trade another card into the Frostwolf Warlord. If he doesn't do that, then I can Druid the Claw and then Taunt, and I'm actually in a really good position from then on. Oh, shit. I can't do both. Well, I need to do that. That much has to happen. The problem is, slam, or even I've now allowed Cleave to do it, 
um, will clear out my Dark Iron Dwarf. Shit, also Fiery War Axe, any weapon. Oh! No. I screwed up. Oh, I screwed up, guys. I am so lucky to be drawing into my late game constantly now. Because I need to. There's nothing else I can do. Holy shit! I imagine, like, when this guy drafted his deck, it, it didn't even say, you know, do you want to pick warrior? Do you want to pick mage? Do you want to pick priest? It just said, do you want to pick priest? Do you want to pick mage? Or fuck Ryan. Holy fuck, Where Knuckle. I'm screwed. Like, that's all my late game. Done. Finito. Beyond for Unute. Uh, it's over. What am I even gonna do against this shit? Um, yeah, that's not going to help me yet. That wouldn't help me even if I did that. Okay, so. We do that. And I have to go for the face because I can't take, I can't risk taking any more damage. Holy shit. Pyrus. Your deck. The light protects me. Wow. I'm I'm glad he's just drawing absolute bullshit now. Uh Starfire! I need to draw Starfire right now. It's not Starfire. Where shall I strike? Me smash. That was dumb. If I did that correctly, I would have also had the Youthful Brewmaster out this turn. Because I returned the 2-1 and then... No, but then I wouldn't be able to attack with the 2-1. Huh. I accidentally did things correctly, guys. Somehow. What the fuck is this? Why? If he attacks with his weapon again, he will kill... The biggest hound in history. <laughs> uh. <coughs> I am gambling by not using the claw that he doesn't have four damage in hand. So if he has mortal strike or corker on elite, I fucked up. That was an odd order to play things in. Okay, so I return that, and then I play that again, and that leaves me with two mana. I have to risk it. So the risk here is that he draws Death's Bite, Mortal Strike, um, or... The, uh, Arcanite Reaper. Or a Corker on Elite. All of those are now enough to kill me, but if I used Claw last turn, they wouldn't have been enough. Awesome. It was the correct play. Yes! I can't take any more damage, so I do have to cop that on the face. And I also do have to heal up. Oh boy. Okay, so now the only top deck that by itself will kill me is a... Uh... Gorhal. Gorhal being the 7 damage, 1 attack weapon. Engaging TC 
to dislocate her. Uh, okay, now I'm in huge trouble unless I top deck fucking seven damage somehow. That's not gonna do it, right? <sighs> Fuck everything. Challenge accepted. God damn it, now I'm so far behind the eight ball. The good news is that uh, Gorhal no longer does it for him by itself. The bad news is I should have been able to play around that. Considering holding one card in hand the whole time, I should have gone, hmm, what are the kind of possibilities? <laughs> Guys, we might have him. Wait, no. What? What the fuck just happened to me? Golden Claw. I just need a little bit of time. I just need to process all of the rage. <clears throat> there we go, I have coughed out the remainder of my emotions, and it is time to verse this paladin coffee cigs. Jesus, fuck. I will fight with honor. Do not let it tilt you, Ryan. Oh. Why? Why do bad things happen to... I was gonna say good people, but I guess what I mean is people. Ah, oh, shit! I sh okay, so I should have coined out the Haunted Creeper because I'm gonna be able to use Wrath as a response to whatever he plays. Reporting for duty. And I would have been able to use it as a really effective response against that one as well. Actually, no, because I would have wanted to use the Haunted Creeper to clear that, so Roth would have been bad. Huh. That's really interesting. Are you going to kill my dude with that? Oh, right. Okay, so that's get down. Get down. Do 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 Okay, so I guess I use the coin this turn. So I trigger get down with my face. Yep. So I trigger get down with my face. What? Guys, we've encountered the new meta. An eye for an eye is the best secret. He did one damage to me, and all it cost him was one card and one mana. That's insane value. I don't even know how to respond to that. Like... Okay, so he couldn't cast anything with 4 mana, so my guess 
is that he also can't cast anything with five mana if I've made everything one more expensive. Right? Uh, obviously, if he has Consecrate, he's going to run the Silverhand Knight into here and then Consecrate. Clear the board, he ends up with five cards, I end up with five cards, and then I have the advantage. For duty. Doesn't have Consecrate. This ma this man is creating the new meta all by himself right now. It's, it's astounding to watch, really. Oh. I love it so much. This is my favorite thing that's ever happened. This makes up more than enough for last game. <laughs> it's the new Paladin medal. An eye for an eye. No one picks that! I would pick literally every card first. I mean, an eye for an eye. Shit, even... Isn't an eye for an eye a common card? So that means that it was up against other common cards, like... Uh, what's a... Haunted Creeper is a common card, right? It's it's the little opal... Well, I guess it's not an opal. It's the little colory thing. I'm just so amazed. I think I might be happy. I think this is what happy feels like. Holy shit. Core Hound is better than an eye for an eye. Because it's a body on the field. Let me think. This has to be someone who's just like, given their four-year-old child the controls for a moment accidentally, right? Right? Oh, shit. You know what? Knowing me, now that I've said everything I have about, you know, just completely trashing this person, I'm gonna lose somehow. Right? He's gonna play, he's gonna like top deck Deathwing, I'm gonna almost kill it, and he's gonna fucking top deck another Deathwing. That's gonna happen. That's not even a joke. That's just what's going to happen. Uh, do I have lethal? Hang on. Um, one, two, six, ten, thirteen. No, I don't. Almost. Well, not quite, but... Hmm. Where shall I strike? For the wild. Oh, you know what? I'm going to play really safe. And I am going to play really safe, because if I do lose now... Um... Well, I'm going to... Kill myself. Like, that's all I can do. Right, and I'm not- I'm not talking, like, pussy across. I'm going straight down the main vein, right? Not across the river, straight down the highway. No, is it across the highway? I don't know. They're all suicide vernacular. Right. How do I deal with a problem such as this? Well. First, I'm gonna do that. Then I'm going to give it one of those. Then I am going to make a machine that will make imps forever. And then I am going to attack his face forever. So this will now make imps until Doomsday. Not the Nero dubstep song, but um, until the end of time. The Paladin new meta is really weak, guys. Didn't work out. You know, this is my favorite idea for a Paladin deck. Follow it along with me. Do you know the card Holy Wrath? No one uses it, so I'll understand if you don't. 
it's draw a card. It's five mana. Draw a card and then deal damage equal to the cost of that card. Right? So if you draw, you know, uh, Blood from the Raptor, Blood from the Raptor costs two mana, it will deal two directed mana. The thing is, you direct the mana, sorry, you direct the damage before you know what it is. So it can end up doing one damage, uh, or zero in the case of a Wisp, or it can do 20 damage in the case of a um, Molten Giant, right? The new meta I propose. Play... Uh, let's just quickly mulligan. Because I have enough two drops, I'm, I'm finding doing that. First, you play an eye for an eye. Then, uh, I can't play Stone Tusk Ball. Because you can kill it. You play, for, you play an eye for an eye. And then, you Holy Wrath yourself for 20 damage that immediately hits the opponent. It's the new metal. You have to draw a, you know, a Molten Giant, obviously. But then the thing is, because you've Holy Wrath yourself for 20, you get to play that Molten Giant immediately. It's the new metal. And if you aren't on board, if you are not on board with the new meta, you can get the fuck out of my face. That is the new meta. That's how this game is going to go from now on. Right? I've dictated it. I'm going to have to make a deck that does that. Oh my god, I totally have to. I love the dancing swords, especially when an opponent plays it because you just get cards. It's like, thanks for the cards, buddy. I really did want an advantage. So if he attacks the Dancing Swords into the Sentient Shield Master and then, you know, kills the Sentient Shield Master however he wants, I can kill it with the Stormpike Commando. These Dancing Swords, they can be... That's the end of their life. I could even do a shapeshift if I really wanted. There we go. If he plays nothing, if he doesn't play anything, I'm j oh, come on. Nothing. Zero. Zero things. Play nothing. Yes! That's almost nothing. It's actually as good as nothing. <coughs> oh my god. See, the thing is, I didn't want him to have two damage worth of stuff on the field, so there would be an immediate threat to my Stormpike. Like, it doesn't matter that he eventually created a threat to my Stormpike Commando, it's just that there wasn't an immediate one. Which is good enough. Uh, even though it's off curve, the bear is fine. Next turn, I can play Ancient of War, or I can Bear plus um, Haunted Creeper. Or if I really desperately need to clear the mirror image um, so that I can get to something behind it, I can use Keeper of the Grove or Druid of the Claw in charge form. So that would be Cat. I wonder. Although I almost always played the Druid of the Claw as Bear. Bear. That's a card that I believe is worth naturalizing. Because I don't have any other immediate way of dealing with it. The unfortunate thing is I can kill that with my hero power, but if I do kill it with my hero power, I don't really have anything to play. Mm, I still have to do it. I was thinking, kill it with the ancient, uh, keeper, kill it with the keeper of the grove, and then play the uh, haunted creeper. Leaves me with a stronger board, not an immediately stronger board, by the way, because this would be a one-two with death rattle summon two one ones, and this would have one more health. Right, so it's not actually that different. 
Um. This is interesting. Hmm. What to do? Oh, that's that's by that's obviously the best choice. So I do that. Deal two damage over there, and then kill it. Hang on. No, that was wrong. I should have sacrificed the boar instead of using the shapeshift and then cast the Scarlet Crusader as well. That was wrong. Fuck. Ah, oh, misplays. Why am I so good at misplaying my cards? Oh. And why did he not fire blast this? I can just pop the shield now. Why would you let me do that ever? Bad Coco. The problem is, I'm saying like bad Coco, and he has the amount of cards in his hand that I have on the board and in my hand. He has an advantage. He's also appar apparently drawn two cards, which confuses me, because I've drawn a card from his thing. Where did he draw all those cards? Taunt mode. Uh. Well, see, the thing is, I'm gonna have one ones on the board to fire blast anyway, so I might as well be creating more one ones. Because he can only fire blast one one one. Oh, oh, oh. Obviously, flame strike sucks, but um, flame strike always sucks. Such is life as a deck that has no real spells in it. I mean, I guess I have Starfire and Mark of the Wild. But that's it. I really want to be able to kill that with my hero power. And because I want to be able to do that, I want something worth two mana. So I can Bold of its Ogre, two mana, and then hero power. Here we go. Holy shit, I got it. Bang! How is he two cards ahead of me? I don't remember him drawing cards. He must have just like sneakily under the table cast um, Arcane Intellect while I wasn't looking. That's That has to be what happened. Because I drew a card off his thing dying, the fuck. Challenge accepted. Mish For the wild. Your magic shall not save. End the game quickly. End the game quickly. This game needs to end right now. I he's got two. Two Antonidas in hand, and a Fireball. Luckily, Antonidas costs seven, and a Fireball costs four, so he can't cast both in the same turn. I wonder. See, the thing is, he can set himself up for a really good board, or he can try and counter mine. Not both. I... For the wild. 
I have to ignore that as well. Because if I try and kill it, I lose. I need... Starfire. Deal 5 damage to a, a single target and draw a card for 6 mana. I need that. And I need one of my things to survive. Just one of them. So no flame strike at all. I've never been so scared in my whole life. And I have played Five Nights at Freddy's. And I have played fucking Amnesia and Outlast. Most of those in my own time. If he can't remove anything right now, or taunt, or heal, I still win. Without Starfire. You love my new recipe. Now I am one damage off winning. It actually might be worth my time to kill the Dancing Swords in order to try and top deck the kill. Challenge because one in 12 of those cards will win the game right now. I hate you. I was talking to the video game, not you. I love you, in general, viewer. The video game is the one that I hate. That does- that means he doesn't have board clear if he did that. Yes! Get in there and fight, maggot! Well played. Yeah, I can feel my heartbeat. Holy shit. That's going a mile a minute. Which means I need to exercise in general because having a mile a minute of a heartbeat after a fucking video game, which you were, uh, let's face it, most likely to win. Not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. Malfurion. Holy Malfurion. shit. Malfurion. I must protect the wife. Uh, cannot keep a stone tusk boar. All the rest of these cards, unfortunately, I need to go for a two drop. Can't keep a stone tusk boar because if it gets wrothed, then I'm really sad. But if it doesn't get wrothed and he uses his hero ability, then I am sadder. Uh, okay, so it looks like Youthful Brewmaster into Bloodturn Raptor. I would love to use Youthful Brewmaster to pull back the Keeper of the. Dead. Grove? I'd love to use the Brutal- Brutal Q Master! What? The Youthful Brewmaster. Oh, I hate that. Um, to bring back the Keeper of the Grove and then cast it for its ability again, that would have been really awesome, but I can't do that. I'll do it. See, the thing is, rothing for three on this, um, it results in basically the exact same thing, because my dude is a 3-2, so he would die to the 2-1 anyway. Ah, that's interesting. I was hoping that I would be able to use, um, Deeper of the Growth this turn, but nope. Turns out no. Uh, so I need to cast something that will survive against the Jungle Panther. Obviously, like, Demolisher dies against the Jungle Panther without even killing anything. Um, and the Jungle Panther survives. Injured Blade Master obviously dies to the Jungle Panther. Jungle Panther dies, at least. These are all things I am hoping to avoid. That's interesting. Where shall I 
Nice. So he's clearly hoping to use his hero ability twice to kill the Scarlet Crusader. Um, I don't want that to happen. The reason that this is still a fine play is because he can deal one damage from the Novice Engineer to the Druid of the Claw, and he can swipe the Druid of the Claw as well, but then the Druid of the Claw still has one health, and he only has one mana left over. So he would need to, you know, shapeshift to finish it off. And unless he still has the coin, which I don't think he does. Shit, does he have the coin? Oh, I don't remember him using the coin. He totally has the coin, doesn't he? Undertaker is one mana, Loot Hoarder is two. Yep, Jungle Panther is three. He has the coin. That's interesting. I must safeguard the land. So that that move was all about developing the board, and on top of that, now I have the Dark Iron Dwarf to buff these two relatively useless at this point in the game things um, to kill whatever he plays. Should I be so scared of it that I need to do that? Hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. The problem is, I am so far behind in cars right now. Oh, shit! I remember what I did last game. I fucking naturalized one of his cards, didn't I? That gave him the two cards in hand. Given enough time, even the dumbest man can figure out the smartest thing. I wonder. Probably not. That's actually a really stupid thing to say. Given enough time, I will figure something out. There we go. That's that's good enough. Fine. I'm going to distract you from all of the stupid shit that I said in the last 30 seconds by playing you some wicked beats. Here we go. Fucking love that skull, man. Musical game on point. Oh, shit. He's very scared of that card. What the fuck are you gonna do to deal with this one? I'm gonna kill that with Stormpike Commander and I'm gonna feel really happy about it. I'm so glad the coin is finally gone, by the way. Uh, I am still gonna use the Stormpike Commander because it allows me to develop the board. Even though I could have killed it with Claw. I actually have a lot of surprise damage in my hand. I have four surprise damage. Which means that I can take down an Ironbark Protector with just my hand and one of the cards I have on the field. Obviously, that's still a lot of things to take something down, but... Yeah. It's less than I would have to use otherwise. I see Shit. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, my hand is totally played out. I am now in top deck mode. And on top of that, I actually don't have much card draw at all in my deck. In fact, I think I have none. Oh wait, Starfire draws a card. Oh, come on! Two really good legendaries. <coughs> I could take that out, but then I will be literally too many cards behind to actually win at any point. So I actually need to go for the face. It's actually all I can do to go for the face. If he has swipe, I'm pretty sure I lose. Taunt almost does it. Heal definitely does it. I've now lost. Oh well, that was a shame.
The problem is that Ragnaros is an amazing card, and Loetheb is an amazing card, right? Last time I got offered two legendaries in a draft, which was actually pretty recently, um, both of them were pretty subpar. I mean, Fugan is... Oh, was it Fugan or Stalag? I still cannot remember the difference between the two. It's, uh, 4-7. It's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not great. And I can't remember what the other one was. Shit, what was the other one? For not a time. I have no clue. I have totally forgotten what the other one was. That's how little it affected anything. I have forgotten what it was. Nature will rise against you. I'm not gonna fucking well played that shit. What are you kidding me? Loetheb into fucking oh. The thing is, stats wise, they're good. It's an eight eight for eight, and it's a five five for five. Um, it luckily Loetheb was played in a position that it was just a five five for five. Right? It's its ability to do um, you know, massive disruption on your opposing person trying to play spells didn't really come into account because I was only two mana short of using my hero power and even then I only would have used that to heal up. So it wasn't significant. I wanted to get a better two drop so I could coin a two and then go two and then three etc. Oh nice! I hope he's relying on that. Oh, I really do. I hope that he's drafted a Death Rattle deck and that he's crying salty, salty tears right now. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> I may not play the Blood from Raptor. I think I'm going to go 3-drop into 3-drop, because 3-drop into 3-drop allows me on turn 4 to play a 2 and a 2. Or a 2 and a hero power, right? So it gives me versatility that I wouldn't have otherwise, and it means that I will have stuff on my board at the end of this turn. Like, he would have to silence and then kill this. Or kill it and then kill it again. In order to stop me from having stuff on my board. That was dumb. If you look up dumb in the dictionary, it will have a picture of my face. That can be swiped. And it's a relatively low target swipe, but it will kill two things. And that's almost good enough. That was dumb. The thing is, if it is swiped, um, I can still do both of these onto the board, which now I can't. Hmm. Interesting. Fuck it, man. I'll return it to my hand and play it again. If you wanted to silence it so badly. I mean, at the point, at that point, it was only a 1-2. So I think returning it actually was more valuable than keeping it on the field. As long as I don't suddenly lose massive board, then it was the wrong decision. If I start to lose board control just ridiculously. Oh, I really want to silence that, but that's so off curve. Challenge the thing is, I can't risk the Demolisher hitting the Acolyte of Pain after the Acolyte of Pain has hit the Demolisher. Because then he draws two cards from it, right? And I can only let him draw one card from it. What you want is for your opponent, the best situation they have for the Acolyte of Pain is to cycle it. That's what you want. Cycle being they basically discard it and draw a new card. Like, if you use Wrath for one damage on a 
opponent that you have no no business doing one damage to, that's cycling the Roth. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts worse. Wow. Nothing happened the way I wanted it to that turn. Luckily, next turn I have Druid of the Claw plus Hero Power, Druid of the Claw plus the Bloodfin Raptor. Excuse me for one second while I cough up a lung. <coughs> no lung! Magic. Interesting. So now, are you more scared of extra damage, or are you more scared of two damage per turn? No. Oh. Pooey. He made the correct decision. Oh! 50 50! Yes! The value! It's off the charts! <sighs> when the Demolisher meta works out, the Demolisher meta works out. I remember a video I watched quite some time ago where someone played two Demolishers. And then they played a fucking... what's it called? You know! He said it. Poopy. <sighs> Let's think about this logically. I have to trade two things into the Druid of the Claw. Just, that's something that has to happen. If I trade its health, I still have to trade Druid of the Claw plus either my Hero Power and the Demolisher or Bloodfriend Raptor. Right, I have to trade two things into it. You love my new recipe. And it doesn't matter what I change out of all the th things. Anyhow, I remember someone playing two demolishers and then using two faceless manipulators to faceless manipulate those demolishers, and then they just had basically a Ragnaros's worth of damage, because that's four instances of two damage. Uh just flung randomly across the map every turn. It was really cool. Obviously, it was worth clearing that one, um, because... Fuck you. That's why. I just don't want anything to pose a threat to this Ancient of War. I just need him to be, like, the biggest dude. Please hit this. Actually, no! Don't hit that. Hit the face. You've hit the face so many times before, I trust you can fuck you. How dare you? Well, actually, it worked out well, so... Yeah. I guess it's okay. So, a Savage Raw top deck would actually, I believe, kill this. I mean, it's six extra damage on top of... One, four, yes. Savage Raw top deck... Plus hero power would allow him to kill the Ancient of War by trading all of his advantages. And then lose to my abusive sergeant. Oh cool, so he did go for the board clear. That's interesting, because it doesn't help him. Although going straight for this would only put it on one health after all of the things he can do. Do I have lethal? No, I don't. Nowhere near. Why am I even thinking about that? Now, I already have more than lethal on the board, so there is no point in playing the Stormpike Commando. I would like to keep the Stormpike Commando in, in case he plays, like, a Sunwalker or something, and I need to pop the Divine nice. Shield and then kill it. Well played. Well played. There's no reason to overextend in that situation. 
many people would say I already overextended in that situation. And to those people, I would say, yeah, fair enough, I kind of did. Probably didn't need that, uh, that abusive sergeant there in the end. That, again, could have been an extra piece of damage that I could have held in my hand. Especially considering it's one mana, it's not even that expensive to play, right? Like, I could play it next turn. Who needs it now? Only if I needed to push the extra two damage from the uh, abusive sergeant the turn after would I need to have played it that turn. Cartoon mope. Uh, okay. This is interesting as a curve, but it doesn't get me an advantage on the board. Nor does that, but it's also more interesting, because it could be amazing, or it could be very, very horrible. Could be either. Okay. Summon a swap its attack and health. I know I could wrath it and kill it, but the thing is, he's gonna draw a card out of me wrathing it, and I'm gonna draw a card out of me wrathing it. Where's the value for me? I need to be able to kill it plus keep something healthy on my board. Stop notificationing for I'm turning my phone off. I threw it way behind me onto my bed. And then I keep getting notifications, like, Hey Ryan, let's talk about D&D. No! We'll do that later! I love D&D, but not now! So obviously, anything on my board currently poses a threat to the web spinner. Fucking eagle horn bow. I mean, he's... He's using it like a three mana fiery war axe, and it's still good. Oh god. That should tell you how good fiery war axe is. It's just the best card. Oh my god. The wrath value. Thing is, I can't play anything after using shapeshift anyway, so. I might as well wrath and see if I can draw something I can play. There we go. <whistles> Boy, doggy. So it looks like he's going to try and hold his Eaglehorn bow until he gets to use a, a secret. So what does that tell me about his deck? It tells me he thinks he has secrets in his deck. And that he thinks they are common enough that he may as well hold on to that card. Where shall I strike? Mm, yeah, no. There's not going to be a better time to play it. It's always going to be threatened. <sighs> I mean, he can actively kill the Druid of the Claw with just the things on his board. Or he could deadly shot, or he could multi-shot. He could do a bunch of things. But the thing is, there's never going to be a better time to play it, really. So, might as well just get it over with. Interesting. I must safeguard the land. The wild. So I'm fine with trading one of the spectral spiders off because it helps me thin down my board, which means that I am much less scared of any um you know unleash the dogs bullshit. Uh, that's the Starving Buzzard or Timberwolf plus Unleash the Hounds in order to either clear a board, deal lethal, or draw every card. All of them. Even cards from different games. He's just like fucking playing draw four from Uno. I don't... How? Just like the Joker card? You usually even take that out of a fucking 52 pack. What the hell? Just love those sick beats, man. I really hope I left the game audio high enough so that you can actually hear the sick beats that go on when you click that skull. Otherwise, well, that's basically my life over. How did I fuck that one up?
That's not threatening enough for me to deal with actively yet. And I also want to get as much health from that as possible and thin down my board, which is why I'm trading that rather than taking one health off my Keeper of Growth. Growth. Grove. Ha. <coughs> <coughs> huh. In contrast, if that was a Spectral Spider, I would have dealt with it because that... As a Spectral Spider, he can use Houndmaster on it. Spectral Spider, by the way, is a beast. Not Spectral Spider, sorry. The um, Haunted Creeper. The 1-2 with Death Rattle, Summon 2-1-1 one, one uh, Spectral Spiders. That is a... Uh, is a beast. He should have done it on mine, actually. I've got a huge Sorry, I need to focus. Some crazy bullshit just happened. I need to focus. Where is my Starfire? I swear I've never drawn it, and I know I drafted one. If I look at my draft at the end of this and there's no Starfire in there... I'm just gonna find a spatula and start flipping shit left, right, and center. So now I cannot kill the Sea Giant without the help of something else. Are you gonna go for the face? It's kind of wise, yeah. So now I can kill the sea giant. Okay, we have equalized for the moment. If he has unleashed the hounds, we lose. If he has uh, multi shot, we lose. If he has deadly shot, we probably lose. That's a kill command, we lose. I need to top deck Starfire or I lose. That's it. It's Starfire or lose. Right, I've got it. Right, I'm gonna... So I do that. Play that, and then I do that. That, and then I end my turn. I lose. That's it. He attacks with the core hound and he uses your hero ability. I need him to spontaneously die. I need him to just erupt into a ball of flames right now. Here we go. Didn't work out. That was, that's, that's my new meta, right? Pray that your opponent dies at the keyboard. And unfortunately, this time it didn't work out. Let's see if I actually... Okay, I can't scroll down. Thank you. Thank you, video game. Yeah, you can't check out your deck after... Arr, shit. Okay. I know I picked a Starfire. So you'll just have to trust me. And I'll have to trust me because... Shit, did I pick a Starfire? Okay, so another one of those 40 dust packs. That's nice to see. That one's going to be called Wildfire. Wildfire? Yeah, Wildfire. Right. Because it... The Starfire was in there, but it was hiding all of the time in the bushes. Like, like, like it was fire in the bushes. So it's like a bushfire, but like, I don't expect many people on... 
other nations who don't have rampant bushfires to understand that one, so I went with wildfire. It's really, really poorly designed, the name of this, but I'm just going to call it wildfire. Because it's the first name that came to mind. My name has been Rapsi- Oh, shit, hang on. I've got to do that whole thing where I pimp myself. Right. If you've liked the video, please click like. It really does help me grow the channel. If you dislike the video, feel free to click dislike as well. That's cool too. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like this now, you'll be able to find links to playlists down in the description below that will show you Ranked, Arena, Nax Ramus. Just those at the moment. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself. My name has been Rhapsody. That's been Hearthstone Arena, and we'll see you next time.